Does anybody want to swap with the people behind the banner so they can give their arms a rest? You're all in dark. I don't actually know if anyone's there. The first person who introduced us all asked if we were paying attention. But of course, the answer is we're here, aren't we? So we are paying attention. My name's Keith, and yes, I am a vicar. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Both types of pantomime noises are acceptable at this stage. I'm from a town called Mansfield, up in Nottinghamshire, and Mansfield, probably like where you live, has been put on a democratic dialysis machine. It's in trouble. It's an ex-mining town, ex-industrial town. It's a place where zero-hours contracts proliferate, and many of my friends and members of the church as well are either on zero-hours contracts or they don't even have contracts. It's a place where our public services are being sold off. If I want to go to my local swimming baths, public swimming baths, I have to pay Serco, who make our Trident nuclear weapons. That's the situation we're in, and I'm sure you're in a similar one. But some things are booming. Food banks, for example, of which we have three or four. Also, payday lenders and loan sharks are flourishing in our town, and bookmakers. All the places where they tax our dreams are doing really, really well in our town. And we need to find a way, there and where you live, to reoccupy democracy. And I guess that's the story we're beginning to share and tell to each other, those especially who are staying here all night tonight and beyond tonight. Thank you. We need to reoccupy, to begin with, our minds. We need to reoccupy our souls and we need to reoccupy our public spaces. We need to reoccupy our minds because there are squatters there, the 1%. Paulo Freire says that the oppressor is housed within those who are oppressed. Their narrative gets deep-seated within us. Chomsky calls it manufacturing consent. Jesus, yes, I brought him in already, uses the metaphor of possession to describe the way the oppressor changes us and brings their, their narrative into ours. So we need to evict those squatters in our minds and reoccupy those spaces as we talk to one another today. We need to kick out the myths of redemptive violence, the belief that those who are strongest must be those who are morally right because they end up on top. We need to kick out that myth. We also, and this is trickier in some ways, need to kick out the myth that we are freedom-loving people. Because that's what George W. Bush told us, I remember. We were freedom-loving people, and anything he says is likely not to be true. Actually, we're scared shitless of freedom most of the time. We don't really want it. And most of us are complicit, certainly I am, in not having freedom. It's not our fault but we can do something about it. We've spent 10,000 years being bred for domestication, like most animals that we know of and interact with. We've been bred for it. And in our lives, we've been trained for domestication. We need to evict that squatter too and reoccupy our minds to become people who love freedom and aren't scared of it. Because it is frightening, and we might as well grow up and talk about how frightening freedom really is. It's why we go through the motions of change and revolution instead of grabbing it. We need to look up. Penguins gather together. They huddle in the cold and they never look up. We need to hold up our heads and look at one another and to have the conversations across the different movements that are here. I've been um, schooled, I guess, in the anarchist tradition here in London, although it's not where I live now. And some of us here will be anarchists and some reformers. I would ask you to give us a shout, but there are spooks and cops about, so I won't. We'll just assume some of us are one and some of us are the other, and some of us in between. But tell one another stories, and let's hear one another stories. Because there is that dilemma, you know, do we smash the state or do we reform it? What happens if we get rid of our public services? Will people die? 
And the problem there, of course, is that the state is just the scaffolding built from European cities outwards. It's the scaffolding for something else, a bigger ed edifice. And we call that edifice fascism or capitalism. It's the same thing. The scaffolding went up and it built the, built the capitalist system. And now the people in there are taking the scaffolding down. They're taking down the welfare state because they've finished or nearly finished building the corporate capitalist fascist system. And if we help them dismantle the state, we will not free ourselves because the fascist system will still be in place. So we need to find a way to talk to one another, to find a way to build something else, something that isn't about either the scaffolding or about the edifice that it's, that's within it. So we reoccupy our minds, but we also need to reoccupy our souls. Living in a vicarage, lots of people come to my house who are homeless. And back in January this year, a man who, uh, we'll call him Rocky, that was the name he gave when he came to the house. It's not his real name. His real name's Stephen. <laughs> but we'll call him Rocky. He came to our house, and, uh, and I couldn't really understand much of what he was saying. But over the three days that he was in our area, he, I found out that he was in his 60s. He was permanently drunk, and he had lung cancer. I tried all my best middle-class tactics to help him. Sandwiches and coffee three times a day. Um, we tried to get him into hospital. He wouldn't go. We tried to get him to the local housing place. He wouldn't go. Eventually he got aggressive and abusive, and, uh, and we had a little bit of a conflict, and, and he did what people who are homeless often do. He went, well, I, I've outstayed my welcome. This is what happens. I'm going to move on to the next place. Three days. He slept outside our house. Outside, I was too scared to let him in. Slept outside, shouting in his sleep, and uh, coming and going. And all through those three days, I had one story in my head, the story of the rich man and Lazarus who slept at his gate. And it was clear to me which one I was. And if you don't know that story, it ends where they both die, and the rich man ends up uh, in the burning flames, and there is a huge chasm between them. And I realized that that chasm is nothing to do with anything to do with the next life. That chasm is fixed here and now. I fix that chasm now between me and other people. Not long after that, uh, during the religious season of Lent, I went without food for 40 days to be in solidarity with those in this country who go hungry every day. Two very different experiences. Because I... I knew when mine was going to end, you know? It's different. I knew in 40 days it would be over, but people who go hungry, some of you may be in that situation, you don't know when it's going to end. And I had heating, and I didn't have the shame, so it wasn't the same experience. But for those 40 days, I sat on one end of the chasm and stared out to the other, to Rocky, and could not cross that chasm. And we need to go into those spiritual places and reclaim our souls and be willing to face that chasm in different ways. So we reclaim our minds, we reclaim our souls, and we reclaim our public spaces. And we're doing some of that tonight, aren't we? We're reclaiming this space. We are paying attention. That's why we're here. We stand on the shoulders of Reclaim the Streets. Do you remember Reclaim the Streets? And Critical Mass. And all those other temporary autonomous zones where we reimagine just for a while our public spaces and give ourselves, one another, and other people a taste of what a free world might look like just for a little while. We need to reoccupy our spaces by, and our public spaces by identifying those who are scapegoated by unjust systems, by bringing them in, by identifying them, by meeting them, and by saying they and us are not separate, but we are all one. Because once we stop people being scapegoated, then those who are really responsible have no one else to blame, and we can see the system for what it is. Every time, every time we stop someone else being scapegoated, every time we counter Islamophobia, uh, Islamophobia or we counter homophobia, or we stop someone with their narrative against those who are disabled, every time we do that, we point the finger back at those whose responsibility it is. Just the act of loving our neighbor is a subversive act with that narrative. Finally, you might be relieved to hear. Finally, 
Finally, we need to reclaim our democracy by different means, by direct action, by nonviolent resistance. We need to be schooled by Jean Sharp, by the Albert Institute and others like that who can help us do what they did in places like Egypt, to find new ways to experiment with seeking justice in new ways that resist in ways that they don't understand because all they have is a hammer and everything to them is a nail. We need to dismantle the scaffolding, but also the edifice. We need to do it by stealth and by story, and we need to do it by subversion. We need to do it by stealth because we need to go from here to local places and dismantle and build new. We need to do it in different ways by building a new world in the shell of the old. We need to recognize what great British writer and thinker Colin Ward said was the new society, the anarchist society. A new world which exists like a seed beneath the snows of injustice. So we are not discouraged because although we see those snows of injustice overlaying everything and it all seems barren and bleak, those seeds have been planted by you and me and others. And as those snows of unjust structures defrost, then the new seeds will be nourished and will grow and a new society, a reclaimed and reoccupied democracy will grow out of what is left. Thank you. So finally, and this was, you know, this was this, the Magnificat, evening prayer, prayer which was banned by the Church of England in many places, in Bangladesh during, uh, during the British occupation of that place. It says that we need to raise up those who are low down and we need to take the mighty from their thrones and cast them down. Those words or versions of them that work with your story need to be written in all our hearts, as we share our stories this evening, as we reclaim this space, but more importantly, our own spaces and our minds and our souls and every public space until the whole thing is one commonwealth for you and me and all of us. Thank you.